I can bring people back to life. I'm a god. Hi, my name's Jess, and today I'm going to be making the long-awaited Dreams Revive book. Like, seriously, every single video, someone asked for the Revive book. Even the last one where I said I was going to make the Revive book, someone asked if I would do it. This isn't just any book from the server, it's the Revive book. It's supposed to be legendary and mystical, so I gotta make a book that lives up to it. This is going to be a Dream XD inspired design, since that's the only thing we really know is connected to the Revive book. But the thing I've never seen anyone do before is make the pages of a book glow. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for this project. And I'm going to be telling you how I'm going to do that in just a minute. Real quick, we are so close to hitting 50,000 subscribers, a number which I didn't think would be possible. So if you've so happened to stumble upon this video, please consider subscribing. It's free, only takes a minute, and you will get all my love parasocially. <laughs> all right, so done. Now let's get to why you're here. Okay, welcome to day one, also known as figuring out how I'm actually going to make these pages glow. My first idea to do this was using LED strips. When in the hand of a master, you can create some truly magical effects. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. The plan is to hide the LED strips in the power source in the spine of the book, then using tracing paper for the pages in hopes that the light would be able to shine through and diffuse through the pages. On paper, this sounds like a good idea. However, once I started prepping the pages, there's a reason that tracing paper isn't meant for bookbinding. It was way too floppy and the book would end up so thin and flat. And then once folded, the light didn't even go through the pages all the way. I have gotten a couple of suggestions for this project of if the LEDs didn't work, maybe try and glow in the dark paint. So I think that's going to be my plan B. However, I didn't want to wait for like glow in the dark to like recharge, you know how it has to like absorb light and then it'll glow up. So to get like the coolest effect, I'm thinking that we use black light paint as well. So for this method, I'm going to go back to using regular sketch paper to make these books, which means I have to rip all the pages out of the sketch pad, which takes a long time for 50 pages. So for painting all these pages, I'm going to be using my airbrush. Not only will it help me paint the pages the quickest, it will allow for a very light and blended application of the paint. I'm using a mix of black light and glow-in-the-dark paint, so it kind of best of both worlds, even if the glow-in-the-dark isn't that bright. It actually ended up working out really well because in bright light, it looks like unnaturally green weathered pages. But under the UV light, a bright green glowing page. I mean, look at that. It literally looks magical. And it makes everything look cool while you're doing it as well. Like look, little glowy paint. And everything was going great until... Oh my god. So we kind of ran into a slight problem. My air compressor decided to just yeet itself off the table last night while I was using it. I mean, luckily it didn't like explode or anything, but I need the airbrush to finish the other half of the pages. Fortunately, it was apparently under warranty and they didn't ask questions. So in the meantime, while I wait for a replacement, I'm just going to move on with the book. So next is prepping the pages for sewing. First step to that is folding all the pages in half. Once they are all folded, I can start forming my signatures. If you're wondering, in bookbinding, a signature is just a stack of pages together. I had 50 sheets of paper, so I divided them into five to make 10 signatures. Stack a bunch of random heavy stuff on the pages to press them. Then I mark where I'm going to punch the holes on each signature. I'm going to be using my fancy schmancy owl to punch the holes, but literally thumbtack has worked just fine in the past for me as well. I use these square cork boards as a punch pad, and then along the crease, I punch out holes along the marks. Next, it's time for sewing. I'm going to be using a kind of non-traditional version of the kettle stitch. Since I already showed how to do this in my Rambu memory book video, I'm not going to go over it again. So if you want to learn more on how to do it, you can go ahead and check out that video. Pretty beginner friendly and perfect thing to do while sitting down and watching a stream. After sewing, it's time to use the secret ingredient bookbinding. A ton of glue. After a few coats of glue along the spine, the text block is done. And now we can move on. Oh, oh no. I should stop throwing things. We can move on to making the cover. I'm cutting mine out of a thick mounting board. For the front and back covers, I cut it a little bit bigger than my pages, and then I cut out a small border as well to go on top for embossing. 
My mounting board had a weird peel stick adhesive thing, which has no effect. I still use glue on the projects. I just wanted to explain why it randomly changed colors. And now we have the front and back covers of the book. And yes, I know it looks ugly right now, which is why we are going to add fake leather fabric, which I've been using for like the last five of my projects because I bought way too much of it and just need to use all of it. To attach it to the cover, I just slather both sides in glue. Ew, why do you use slather? Who uses the word slather? I then use my bone folder to press down the leather onto the book cover, making sure to crease around the embossing borders. I then put on even more glue, see I told you, it's literally just all glue, to wrap the borders around the back. Now we have our front and back cover, we're just missing the spine. And I thought the best way to do this was to use a paper towel roll. And a paper towel roll. I hope y'all are also getting that TikToks, if not, I'm just going to sound insane. Joking aside, uh, this was just a really good fit to get the curvature of the spine that I wanted. And plus, I love using materials that is very likely that you guys will also have at home. All I did was wrap it in the leather and then add a few more details onto it. And then, with the excess leather on the side, I glue it to the front and the back covers. I did try using some acrylic paint to give it a dark green color. You can't see on camera though, but it, it's there in real life. You just gotta trust me on that. I then paint some strips of EVA foam gold and place those on the spine. And then just a couple more finishing details. Guys, I am absolutely in love with the way this cover is turning out. Like compare the spine of this one to what the mess of the Carl Jacobs book was. Now let's get working on the final detail of the cover, the Dream XD a amulet sphere thing. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> All right, only a couple more things to do before this book is finished. I decided to try and use foam clay to make the center Dream XD cover decoration. Foam clay is a really cool material because as the name implies, it starts out as a soft clay material that you can carve and form. And then when it dries, it becomes a solid piece of foam. I thought things were going well. I painted the base color, added the UV green light, glued it onto the book, and realized it was super ugly. So I ripped it off. This is what I get for trying new things. So uh, trying again, I just used a flat piece of EVA foam and painted that. Then using a black paint pen, I drew on the letters. Then going over that with the green UV light paint. So happy that I started over. It looks way better than before. After painting, it gets a trim of the gold painted EVA foam. May not look the cleanest up close, but on the cover I think it's going to be fine. I finally got the replacement air compressor delivered, so I was able to finish airbrushing the rest of the pages. With that, the last thing to do was just to glue the text block into the cover. This was pretty simple by just gluing the front and back pages against it. I know, even more glue to finally finish off the book. And lastly was adding the Dream XD cover piece, and the Revive book is finally complete. I can kill you whenever I want. I can bring you back. I could, you know, I could go and kill Tubbo and then I could bring him back. I could kill people and just bring them back if I wanted to. Everyone is my puppets. And then I'll revive you, and then I'll kill you again, and then I'll revive you, and then I'll kill you again, and then I'll revive you, no, you, won't. you again. I'm a god. I hope it was worth the wait, and I'll see y'all in the next video.